Oh, oh this is it's taking all of my muscles. You can pay a pro 280 bucks to come roll your fenders, or you might be able to get the same results using one of these. Are the risks worth the savings? Should I DIY? Or should I don't? Do it. Don't do it. Thanks to carparts.com for sponsoring today's video. Everyone struggles with relationships and your relationship with your car is no different. So Nolan, what brings you in here today? This isn't an easy thing to say, but I've been driving other cars. How could you, Nolan? Good, Mustang, good. Let it out. Now, Nolan, let's focus on why you're driving other cars. It's just not the same anymore. Got weird electrical issues, mm -hmm. water pumps leaky. Typical S197 stuff. Well, you're the one who drove me to those conditions. I was your first car. <laughs> not my first car, all right. What? Okay. And no one forgets their first car. But as the years go on, you have to admit, Mustang, that you do take more work. Luckily for both of you, there's carparts.com. Carparts.com is a smarter way to shop for your auto parts, connecting you with the right part at the right price hassle-free. Plus, at checkout, Carparts.com can link you to nearby local shops to receive installation quotes for free. So build back the trust and quality of your relationship with your car today. You know what, Dr. Jerry? I think that's exactly what we need. I'm so happy, I think I'm gonna cry. Here. <laughs> They're there, it's okay. Get the right parts right now at carparts.com. Check it out and maintain the love with your car today. Hiring a pro can be expensive, but doing stuff yourself can sometimes be scary, frustrating, and you might even want to give up. Now you guys know me, I'm always trying to do stuff myself, but with certain jobs, like the one we're gonna be doing today, if you don't do it right, you risk ruining your car, and that's not what we want. So you just got your sick new set of wheels and you got your fitment dialed. That means there might be some rubbing. When your wheels and tires are super flush with your fender, you can rub your fender, your fender liner. You can damage the paint. Hell, you can even rip your whole fender off. So when it comes to getting your fitment perfect, you might need a little extra clearance that comes in the form of rolling your fenders. And you can see we've got some pretty tight clearance. We might need to make some more. A pro uses specialized tools and experience to roll your fenders, basically bending the metal without damaging your paint. It takes them anywhere from 75 to 95 minutes and it'll cost you around $250 to $300 for a whole car. But if you're really on a budget, that old baseball bat in the corner of your garage might be able to give you the same results. Let's find out. Our pro is gonna roll the fenders on the driver's side of the car and then when he's done, I'm gonna step up and try my hand at this on the passenger side. Take note, that dent was already there. Today our pro is David Pham. Uh, you can find him on Instagram at Mr. Sexy S2K. Okay, all right. Well, we appreciate you, David. Thank you for coming out. So what's this uh, chunk of blue steel on your lap? So pretty much this is a fender roller. It mounts to the hub and you put lug nuts on it and it'll just help roll your fenders. Nice. So, I mean, these aren't too terribly expensive. Anybody can really buy one, but what's the learning curve like? Anyone could technically do it, but it's just, you know, how you do it. But the roller, you can pull it out too much. You can, you know, warp it up, have it come out like very bacon, so. Well, probably pretty easy to like crack your paint yeah, too. Yeah, the, you know. the paint is the number one thing. So what's the difference between like fender rolling and fender pulling? So fender rolling is literally just folding the lip against the panel and then pulling it is bringing the fender out. And like so, actually changing the exterior changing. look of the car, right? Correct. All right, well now that we know the basics, I guess it's time to get this show rolling. Get it? Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> <laughs> I like the way that you I better get to do sexy stuff too, you guys. <laughs> so it looks like you're trimming the fender liner. I was wondering about that. Do you always have to trim it? Sometimes have to take it out? You always have to trim it on the outside because that's where it rubs the most. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take out the liner because it kind of gets more dirt into the engine bay. So the liner still stays functional as long as you just cut a small piece off. Sure, it's probably easier to trim it while it's on the car, right? Yeah. Now, you gotta mount the roller. Some cars won't fit but majority of European cars and um, Japanese cars will fit. In rolling the fenders, the number one thing is heat. 
Heat helps you kind of shape the metal and then it kind of prevents the paint cracking, which is the big thing. Yeah, it softens up the paint a little bit yeah. and lets it be a little bit more flexible. But what if the car is vinyl wrapped or plastic dip? With the wrap, it's kind of tough. Depending on the brand, like it sometimes it will bubble up. It's better to do the car before it's wrapped. Yeah, yeah, that way there's no issues. How do you know when you've got enough heat in the paint? Is it possible to heat it too much? I, I think because I've been doing it for so long, I know how, how much it needs to be. You heat it up too much and you'll start to burn the paint. Yeah. All right, so once you get the heat into it, uh, how long does it take you to actually roll it? How many passes of the roller? The passes kind of varies. I actually don't really keep track of the passes. Is it kind of the slower the better? You really the want to sneak the up better. on it? You don't want to go too fast. You it always seems want to like it. something you need patience for. Is that yeah, accurate? Yeah, you have to have a lot of patience. I have it. so much patience. <laughs> You just massage it a little bit. Don't apply too much pressure. Too much pressure can lead to kind of the, the bulging in the paint crop. So you always want to work it in a tad bit. Always go back and forth. Never rush it. And donezos. Man, that took forever. It's been 14 minutes and 35 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> you better pick up the pace. <laughs> Oh, that's a lot of clearance. Looks a little bit smoother. Yeah, honestly, I think you did uh, did this thing a favor in terms of the overall fender shape. And that is like fully folded over. That's a lot of clearance. For the back, I'm just gonna just straight up roll it, the lip against the panel, and it'll give you the clearance that you need. Sometimes you can shave the rears, use a Dremel, whatever. Just but in be this careful. case, we'll be able to fold it. You can fold it. It's better to just shave like like really like thick cars. Mm -hmm. So if you roll like thick cars, it just it's just still thick even when you roll it. Yeah, yeah. The experience you have in doing this lets you know that, and I guess that is kind of what you pay for when you yeah. pay a pro to come do this stuff. Man, where all this dirt come from? <laughs> Oh, hell yeah. Always want to make sure the inside is clean so all that dirt doesn't get trapped in there. Oh. Is this help? Am yeah. I helping? Yeah, you're helping. Good. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm really getting it. All done. Well, all right, and in just under an hour, 54 minutes, 50 seconds to be exact, and that was with us talking to a bunch, bugging you, pointing cameras at you. Hey. So, not too bad. Look at all that clearance. Sexy clearance. Sexy clearance. Less than an hour to do the driver's side. Now let's see how I fare. All right, let's get this uh, party started. Good solid start there. Rights and lefts, folks, rights and lefts. First thing I'm gonna do, uh, trim the fender liner. Uh, I got a little utility knife with a fresh blade in it. God damn it. I already can tell that I wish I had this cool stool. I've never seen anything quite like it. I gotta tell you, I'm gonna order one before the day's over. Now with the fender liner trimmed, I'm gonna put the wheel back on. We still don't have a very big gap here because the car is pretty low. The fat end of the bat still isn't gonna fit through here. And this is a pretty skinny bat. So depending on your ride height and how much clearance you have at full droop, you might have to end up using the back side of the bat. Okay, let me get some heat on this It's like watching paint dry, but the paint's already dry. All right, we got the fender nice and warm. Let's try some rolling. As I come in here, I'm just making sure I'm getting on that little lip and folding it up. It's kind of tricky to get this angled so I can actually hit the lip I need to fold. Definitely feels riskier than the uh, tool method. I think the bat method might be a bad idea. Doing it yourself can lead to like spending more at the body shop, just fixing what was chipped off or was warped up. What was up? Use, use a lot of heat and go very slow. Got it. <laughs> oh, oh, this is, ah, this is taking all of my muscles. Oh. Man, f this. Can I use your tool? This is way worse than if you have a fender roller. This back kind of sucks. All right, I'm getting a hammer. 
This is a nice hammer for this type of thing. This is a non-marring hammer, rubberized ends, so you don't mar things. Uh, but if you don't have one of these, just a rubber coated dead blow like this will work. The hammer is definitely making quicker work of this than the bat. Keep banging, keep banging. That's like that? Yeah, like that. Harder. <laughs> Pop a little bit of that dent out while we're at it. What do you say? You know, I'm about to call that done. Our lip is flipped up in there pretty tight. Didn't break any paint. And we even made this look a lot better. I wouldn't say it quite looks like it was done with a fender roller. Kind of looks like it was done with a hammer. Good job, young Padawan. Thanks, Good man. Job. Clearance, 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 everything. Prices slashed. The front fender took me a whopping 37 minutes. So uh, I'm definitely moving a little slower than David, but that's not really what I'm worried about. Let's try to do a good job. I think I might use the fender roller on the rear to see how that goes. Because in my opinion, a fender roller is a cheap enough tool that you could reasonably buy one. You can get them for 60, 70, 80 bucks. Let's find out how tricky one is to use. Yes, more heat, master. More heat. more heat. What you think, dog? How am I dowing? A room. A room. It's definitely a lot easier and a lot more chill, a lot less nerve wracking than using a baseball bat or a hammer. It feels like you can really sneak up on it, you know? All right. I'd say that's a rolled fender and we didn't even crack any paint. I mean, apart from all the paint that's missing on the inside from rubbing, but not bad. I think I got it just about as good as David and it probably didn't take me too terribly long. The tool was kind of convenient. Oh, 59 minutes, 38 seconds, just under an hour and only about five minutes longer than David took. I'll take that. All right, the fenders are rolled. The job is done, but now it's time to reflect and really talk about how this went and whether or not it was worth doing it myself. He would have charged us $280 to roll all four fenders on this car. I spent much less than that. Figure about 10 bucks for a baseball bat, you might have one laying around, 10 bucks for a dead blow hammer, and figure about 20 to $50 for a heat gun, which you also might already have, and if you don't, maybe you could use your mom's hair dryer. I think it's totally reasonable to buy a fender roller. I ended up using David's, uh, he got that for about $80, but you can get one just like it on carparts.com. So that brings us to a grand total of about $120 to $150, just about half of what David would have charged us. And then we've got the tools to do it again in the future. But how much effort did I have to put in? It wasn't easy. I definitely broke a sweat. I really don't ever want to have to roll a fender with a baseball bat again. I was struggling a little bit. Oh. But as I got going with the fender roller, I feel like I got the hang of it pretty quick. Now let's talk quality, arguably the most important bit of this whole thing. David's quality was impeccable. I mean, that's what you expect from a pro, right? My quality, I think, is pretty close to David's. There's definitely a few spots where I was getting a little worried, but I was able to smooth it out, though it did take me a little bit longer. Not too terribly bad, if I do say so myself. If this is the kind of thing you're into, you've got some spare time and you don't mind making the investment into the tools because you might use them again, then hell yeah, get in there and DIY it and you'll learn a little along the way. But if that doesn't sound like the kind of thing you wanna do, or if you have a car that you are very particular about and don't wanna trust yourself, there's no control Z on cars, then heck yeah, hire a pro. That's what guys like David are for. They'll come to you, roll your fenders, and leave you with a perfect job rather than messing it up like you might. Hey you, you want to get buff this year? Well listen up, Pasta Arms. Donut just released the ultimate gym attire. And I'm here to show you how to get it workout ready. So pay attention. Step one, buy this beautifully designed shirt for just $29.98. That's way less than $30. Step two, get some scissors out of the drawer. The one that we all have in our kitchen. Step three, carefully cut off the sleeves like so. You'll notice with each snip that this shirt is made from high quality cotton. Now doing this will help airflow as well as highlight your soon to be sculpted arms. So go to DonutMedia.com and get all sweaty in this new 
Buff Horse's shirt today. Thank you guys so much for coming to this episode of DIY or Don't. I hope you learned a thing or two along the way and I hope you enjoyed the video. Special thanks to David for coming out and helping us roll our fenders. You can follow him on Instagram at Mr. Sexy S2K. <laughs> Mr. Sexy. Ah. I guess that's why they call him that. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Zach Job. You can follow Donut at Donut Media. Of course, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you guys next week.